Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Blender Absolute Beginner tutorial series I've been working on. Uh, one new thing you'll see in this episode is our... I now have this OSD hotkey to show you when I press a key or click with the mouse. It'll show up there depending on what I click. The reason for that is because, number one, this is going to be a longer tutorial and I want to get through it quick so I don't want to have to explain all of the old stuff that we've already learned. Number two is in case I don't explain something in the future, it I think it'll help. If you guys hate it, let me know in the comments. If you love it, I'll keep it around. Um, let's jump in. Like I said, we have a lot to do. We're working on this simple person today. We have four things we want to do to him. The first three are really simple. We're going to extrude his arms a little bit. We're going to extrude some feet out of him. And we're going to make his head a little more egg-shaped. The fourth thing is we're going to make a hat and put it on him. And that's really what I want to focus on. So let's kind of hurry through this other stuff and then we'll get to that a little later in the video. So you'll remember we added this modifier to the mesh because he was all boxes like you can see here. And we added this modifier to subdivision surface to make him a little more smooth. But we never hit apply. Now I want to show you really quick why we didn't hit apply. If you're in edit mode, you'll see he's still made of boxes, just like the original mesh. But if we hit apply, which cannot be done in edit mode, I always forget that. If we hit apply and then switch to the mesh, it's crazy complicated. So and if you hit control Z, you can uh, get out of that, but you have to go reapply the modifier. So that's the reason we didn't do that is we can still see what he would look like without applying it and still work with the simple mesh. And then once we're all finished, we can just apply the mesh and be done. So this may this will make it a lot easier to extrude, say for example, his arms, which we're gonna do now. Go to face select. Um, we're gonna zoom in here a little bit. Select this top face on both of his, oh, there you go, on both of his uh, arms just like that. So you see we're kind of just going to extrude straight up. So extrude and we're going to go up I think two? No. We'll go three. Yeah, make it look like he's uh, flexing or something. And then yeah, four actually. So we're going to do four just to make it look like he's flexing, like he actually has some arms. I know that that doesn't look the best along the the corners there, but this is still a simple person. We're not going to make him ultra realistic. And then we're going to come down to the feet and select these two front vertices. I'm going to turn occlude geometry on just to make it a little easier to work with. We're going to select those. We're going to go to the specials menu with W. We're going to subdivide those two faces. And then we're going to select all of these bottom faces and we're going to extrude them in the X direction, let's say two. And now he has some decent looking feet. And he's already looking more and more like a like a person should instead of a stick figure. Okay, so the third simple thing we we're going to do is stretch out his head. And this is a little bit more complicated. We're going to turn occlude geometry off again. Um, we're going to select the bottom. Oh, we're on face select. We need a vertex, the bottom vertex here on the icosphere head. And we're going to shift S and move the cursor to the selected vertex. Now we're going to change the pivot point. We've done this before with the house. We're going to change the pivot point by clicking the overlapping circles here, which mean the median point. We're going to change it to 3D cursor. So right where that bottom vertex is is where, where everything is going to stretch out away from now. Now a new tool is Control L. Um, by the way, you'll see this Control L here. All of these letters are lowercase. So even if I do like caps lock or shift or whatever, they're all going to be lowercase. So that's not an I, that's an L. The I will always have the, the dot on top. 
Um, so Control L, what it'll, it'll do is it'll continue to select everything that's linked to the, op the vertex or face you already had selected. So since we had selected the bottom vertex, we hit Control L and all of the Igosphere is connected, so it'll all be selected. Now we're just going to scale, and we're going to lock it to the Z direction by hitting Z, and we're going to go about one and a quarter, so 1.25. And hit enter. And then you can hit A to deselect, hit tab to go back. And this is about all we're going to do to the body of this man. If you want, you can stretch out his torso a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. Like I said, the focus of this video hopefully is more on the hat. So let's get to making this hat. There's a really cool tool I want to introduce. First, let me talk about layers. So if you notice all of these grid down here on the the 3D view window header, this grid, is each a different layer. What that means is if I switch to another layer, it's going to be blank. They're kind of like pages in a book, but you can overlay them almost like a, a transparency if you've ever worked with those in school or anything. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a different layer, um, and then we're going to work on that layer because it'll you know have less clutter. It'll be free and clear of anything. And then once we're done making the hat, we're going to move it back to this layer and combine it with the person. So the way to move between layers is to use the number keys, not on the numpad. So if you're emulating, um, I'll show you. If you're emulating the numpad on your number no, on your normal number keys, I'll show you how to work around that. But if you're not, you can just press two to go to layer two, and then one to go back to layer one. Now, for those of you emulating a numpad on your notebook or whatever, if you come down and watch this, when I hit 2, and make sure the cursor is in the 3D view window, when I hit 2, it switches the gray to this one. That's layer 2. 3, 4, 5, it just switches between all of these. So what you can do is just use your mouse, if you want, and just click on that next layer. You don't have to hit 1 and 2 at all. But just know that the layers are 1, 2, etc. So switch to layer 2, however you want and make sure you're in orthographic mode still hit three and we're going to come down to a right orthographic view all right center this a little bit now what we're going to do is we're going to draw vertex by vertex the uh side it's kind of hard to explain the side silhouette shape of a hat and then we're going to spin it to make it a full 3d object easier to see than to explain I assure you but I'm gonna try and make a sombrero you can try and make whatever kind of hat you can um, you can make anything your imagination will let you but piece by piece I'm going to try to make Oh, I'm in object mode make sure you're in edit mode so control click then Oh, here's another trick I forgot to explain this, sorry. In object mode, we can't switch to edit mode because there's nothing to edit. So a simple trick is to just shift add any mesh, um, switch to edit mode, and then hit X and delete all vertices. And you're in edit mode, but then you've deleted everything. So now we're in edit mode. We can do the control click thing we learned many previous videos ago and just click some points in and make kind of an outline of a simple hat and try and end right on the Z axis. Now since we're working in two dimensions then I want to hit seven and I want to make sure it's lined up on the Y axis here. So hit A to select all and then grab and move it right. Perfect. Okay, so once that's right there on the axis, make sure they're all selected and come over to the left and hit spin and it'll go crazy. Everything's all messed up, don't worry. Come down to the spin options. Degrees, we're gonna do 360 degrees all the way around. The center, because of where we centered it, is gonna be at the origin, zero, zero, zero. And the axis that we're gonna spin around is going to be purely the Z axis. So zero zero one, one for the z-axis. 
and you notice it's spun around. You can still see selected the thing we drew, and it spun around and did the rest for us. So you can actually come in and, um, oh, I'm still selected over here. You can come in and look at it, and you can see that it is now more like a sombrero. Not the best in the world, but hey, I'm not an artist. So what you want to do now is some of these vertices, especially around here in the center, are repeating, and there's a lot of extras. So hit A to twice to select everything. Come over on the left in this toolbox, and if you can't see the toolbox, T, the button T will hide it and show it. So come over in the toolbox and find remove remove doubles and you'll see it just removed 14 vertices that were just extras in there so then the next thing you want to do is come to 7 um, edit mode and just do a border select select this in the middle and then go to merge at center and that removed another eight vertices. So if you want to, for example, if your hat's too pointy in the middle and you try and move one of them, there are actually like eight vertices right there in the middle you'd have to move. But now we've merged them all into one center vertice, vertex. Um, okay, so hat's done. That is all I'm going to do for the hat. And now we need to move it to layer one. So hit A to select, no, sorry, object mode is where we're going to move it from. Hit M and you can either just click the layer or you can say 1 and now it's in layer 1 so let's move back to layer 1 by pressing 1. Now we have a problem. There's a hat and it's really big and it's on his ankle. Um, for scaling purposes we're going to select the person and he's called cube right now because we made him out of cubes Let's come over to the properties, this cube. These are the object properties. And we're going to name him person. Just so he's person. Um, and then we're going to come over and right click on the hat. And it's a plane because that's what we deleted to get into edit mode. Um, we're going to call him hat. And yeah, whatever, I'll just leave it like that. Okay. Now right click on the person again and come over on the left and there is a origin button and hit origin to geometry and when you do notice on his ankle right here is this orange dot. That's not part of the hat, that is part of the person. That was the center of the original cube that we started with and that is the pivot point in object mode, not in edit mode, in object mode it's pivot point. So we're going to actually change that origin to the geometry and it comes into the center of this geometry and now when we scale things it'll scale in and out from there. I don't know if that'll be important to us here or not but it is an important point if something's scaling funky in object mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab and we're going to lock it to the z-axis and just move it straight up. Zoom out a little bit. Um, perfect views will help on this and multiple views will be probably necessary to get everything lined up correctly. So grab Y and try and center that. You can shift and scroll wheel will dolly a little bit if you need to adjust the view, which I do. Um, move this down. Now we're going to switch to the other view. That looks centered. Other view, that looks centered. All right. Now we have two objects. And for all intents and purposes, it would be helpful to join them together somehow. And if we wanted to be really drastic about it, we could select both of them and hit Control J. I'm not going to do it, but you can hit Control J to join them, and there'll be one object, and the most recently selected object will be the name that it takes. So we're not going to do that, because what if we want to use this hat on something else, and we just want to duplicate it quickly without duplicating the whole person? We can link them together by doing what's called a parent-child relationship, where one object is the parent, and then it can have several children, one of which will be 
say the hat. So the person would be the parent and the hat would be the child. If we wanted to add a shirt, we could make that another child or shoes, we could make that another child. You get the idea. So the way to do that, well, let me start. The advantage of that is that if I change something, certain properties on the parent, like on the person, it'll apply those property changes to the children as well. And since I haven't used it extensively, I don't know exactly what those changes are, but it's a good way to think about it and a good way to set it up. So what you want to do is select the hat, select the child, and then select the parent second, and then you do control P and set parent to object, which will set all of the selected items to be children of the most recently selected item. So since we selected the hat first, it will become child of the person which we selected last. So there we go. And we have it now as a child. All right, so this concludes, I'm glad we got through all that. This concludes our really quick tutorial on making a simple person. Um, next week, I'm going to jump more into some materials. I'm going to talk about UV maps, what they are, what they're good for, and how to make a very simple one in Blender. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week. Hey guys, one last thing that I had to edit in really quick that I forgot to mention is the hat has the facets like we talked about with the person. We're going to hit smooth on the shading and it doesn't look that great. But what we can do is come in and add a modifier to the hat object itself, subdivision surface, crank up the view and the render, and there we go, a much better looking hat. So that's one last thing I forgot to tell you guys. Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.